fast, you know, everyone's trying to run around <laughs> and scramble and get everything put together. Yeah, we were loading in, man. There was still there was kids like standing at the front of the stage and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. They've been there since like ten in the morning. Yeah. Which is way too early. It is early. Or at least I never show up. I show yeah. at ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's just me, I guess. Yeah. I'm usually the guy kind of strolls in after doors. At twelve o'clock, it's the rock star breakfast. So, <laughs> Dude, so this is I a like big that. deal. This is the first. Yeah, it's first serving festival. alcohol and. Uh, yeah, it's the first big music festival. Uh, I guess you say. It's kind of like a big deal. We do like um, back in the day, we used to have a holy putt festival, two plus built backwards, <laughs> and um, <laughs> it was really cool because it was downtown. Um, it was pretty laid back, you know, and they had um, they had like uh, beer stands and stuff like that, and uh, hurricanes for the big thing for that one. But um, it, oh, it, the beer it, hurricane. No, like hurricane hurricanes. The yeah. malt liquor. Yeah. Oh, so I'm familiar with that. Blew up, dude. It was awesome. But then uh, city council kind of uh, this is a quiet, peaceful town. You know, <laughs> so they toned it down and then they made it where <clears throat> you had like a um, couple bars downtown that you could go to and drink there, but no alcohol premises. And then over the past few years, instead of doing holy putt, they turned it into the Elvis Festival. And uh, they have battle with the bands there, which has been kind of a uh, Kill J, one of the bands playing here, Save and Able, that's kind of like where they were getting started and kind of getting you know, the whole thing. They actually, Battle of the Bands for one year, the winner opened up for Saliva. That's oh, sweet. Yes. Cool. Which they didn't even get to meet the band. Like security rushed them off stage. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. The band's like, you got to open for Saliva. Like, yeah. <laughs> got them out of there. All right. Uh, this is for the documentary that you're doing and everything. Cool. Sweet. I'll keep it all this beer talk. You got any beer on here? You got that on the documentary? Got some wine. That's something. I feel like I should be drinking a beer. I don't this know. Uh, it makes me feel at home. I'm good. I'm good. I'll take yeah. one, man. Um, I'm still low on my alcohol intake. You got too much blood in your alcohol stream. <laughs> I got too much, got too much party. Blood. I like that uh, saying. That sounds like an awesome I'm country remember song. That. <laughs> I got too much blood in my alcohol hey. stream. Yeah, but uh, if I write a song about that, I'm no not giving you royalties. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I totally yeah. be, uh, like, uh, Is there any way we can get that back? Like behind the music. Yeah, <laughs> we have a lot. Of stuff. Well, honestly, I mean, there was this one guy. show in Tupelo. And yeah. Like, ah, yeah, I don't remember that. All right. Oh. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what has drawn y'all to the Minerva Music Fest? Uh, what was like the, the the main thing that brought y'all to this? Um, actually, we uh, we're a band from Jacksonville, Florida. So we're a southeastern band in general. Uh, a lot of our music is southern in nature, and uh, the predominantly uh, states that we tour mostly are the southeast. So we're always trying to play anywhere in this area. And when we heard about the festival. Sounded like a great lineup. Uh, we're really good friends with Saving Abel. Um, we actually used to be label mates with them. We used to be on Virgin and they're on Virgin. So we know a lot of the same radio guys and a lot of the same staff guys. And also Framing Hanley are actually really good friends of ours as well. So it just seemed like a great lineup. And when we got the offer, it, it seemed cool. So we just said, sure, why not? All right, cool deal. Yeah, y'all be playing. Uh Masquerade Yep, Masquerade, like I said, Southeast, uh, you know, we're going to go to that Chipotle. The same one we always go to. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're always playing the Southeast. Uh, it's, it's rare. I mean, sometimes we tour the West Coast, not very often. Uh, we're, we're an East Coast band, yeah. specifically a Southeast uh, band. And, uh, you know, if you live down here, you're going to see us plenty of times if you're into it. Awesome. Uh, a lot of other bands that came around from Jacksonville, you know, like Limp Bizkit, Call Yellow Card. Uh, I know y'all did a Katrina Benefit. With Shine, Shine Down. Down. Yep. And that was a big one. Also, as far as your benefits <clears throat> go that y'all played, I know y'all played uh, several different ones. Uh, one for the, uh, uh, y'all did the uh, National Coalition of Against Domestic Violence, which uh, you know, Face Down was the yep. big one for that. <clears throat> if you don't mind asking, what is the, what was behind that song as such? Was it someone that you knew that you're writing about? Was it someone close to you, a friend, something like that? What inspired that song? Um, well, all of our songs, um, every song that's ever been written as far as the lyrics, I write the lyrics so I'll just have to kind of take over for, for a second on this one. Um, the, a long time ago, this is Duke, we, uh, we started jamming back in high school 
and uh, when we first started the band, it was, wasn't really, it was more of a cover band than a band. I have my own band called Dishonest. He had his own band called The Recovery, and we did all of our original music, and he did all of his original music. And in the meantime, we had college music theory together in high school, and we would just be sitting in there, and our band director was kind of a flake, so he would only show up uh, literally like for about 15 minutes out of the day, and he would give us the book and be like, hey, well, you know, just kind of teach yourselves, because we were kind of you know, on that advanced level of music. So we would just sit around and go over the lesson plan for the day. And then after that, we we're surrounded by this entire room of musical instruments, drum sets, guitars, tubas, trumpets, trombone, clarinet, flute, you know, fill in the blank. And if you put a bunch of musicians in a room, they're gonna get bored and they're gonna start making music. So the one thing we started doing was playing cover songs, songs that we were into. And back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, we were really into punk rock. So we were, we'd do Blink-182, you know, Jimmy World, MXPX, Lagwagon, No Effects, all those kind of bands. So that was really kind of where the band started as far as like, me and Duke playing together and then for the next probably about two years he was pursuing his band I was pursuing my band and we still hung out and played a lot of Halo and video games and had a couple beers now and then and anytime we did we'd jam and we always had a good time jamming together and then we decided to do a new band that was kind of a combination between my band and his band which wound up becoming Red Jumpsuit and about around the 2003-ish area I don't really have an exact day because we didn't have a plan. It was just kind of like we'd meet up every Friday and play Halo and have a couple beers and maybe jam out. So it wasn't really, it wasn't even really band practice at first. And then uh, we wound up just started writing new riffs and he would bring in riffs that his band couldn't use and I would bring in riffs that my band couldn't use. And they just seemed to work together. And then, uh, like, you know, it just started off very kind of on its own. And then as far as um, to where the song started. We decided after we started playing a couple of shows, we uh, we really just had a really great fan base in Jacksonville that's always been made up of our friends and family first beyond anybody else. Just people that have always had our backs. Like I said, uh, fans of my band and his band and then and every other everybody else in this band has been in bands. Matt was in a couple of bands together at last, Echoes of Angels. You were in uh, a couple of those bands as well yeah. with Matt before yeah. Matt was in our band. Joey was in a couple bands before this band. So we're all members of previous local bands from our small hometown that wound up playing together. So with that being said, when we finally started releasing what we call Red Jumpsuit Music, um, I just happened to be the guy who was writing the lyrics and I was writing a couple of songs that were really kind of personal at the time and the first three songs we ever wrote were 20 Hour Drive, Kins and Carol, and Getting By, which are all basically about the scenario that we were in at that moment in time and it just clicked with our fan base and it clicked with ourselves as people and everybody dug it so we just made a decision in the very beginning that we were going to write songs that were basically stories of our lives so that's what started it and with Face Down it's exactly the same um, unfortunately I had a kind of a crazy childhood and uh, my parents got divorced when I was really young and before they did it was pretty gnarly and uh, you know it's a classic uh, just uh, two people that were in love but probably shouldn't have been married and a lot of drugs and alcohol and violence were involved in that and Unfortunately, uh, they went their separate ways, and uh, we got adopted, luckily, by my grandparents, which kind of salvaged the whole family, because if that wouldn't happen, we would have got split up uh, by foster care. So, Face Down is just a song, one more song, that you know, that particular song's about my uh, growing up as a kid, but all the songs on every album that we've ever released are about this band, whether they're not all about me, some of them are about Duke, some are about Joey, some are about John, and uh, some of the new ones will probably be about Matt. So I mean, it's just the way I perceive of where we are as a band or individuals in our life. And that's just, it's one song like the rest. That one just happened to hit home for a lot of people because I'm obviously not the only person who's gone through a domestic violence situation. And the NCADV actually reached out to us. We didn't come to them, they came to us and they were getting emails and, and phone calls about how, you know, uh, you know, girls driving down the road, or, or even guys sometimes. Because believe it or not, it does. That was the one regret I had that I didn't. I didn't really paint the picture both ways, but it is painted both ways. Anybody who's getting abused, it's it's the same picture for both. But they were uh, saying, "Hey, I heard the song on the radio, and it made me want to change my life. Mm -hmm. It made me want to stop today and and leave this relationship that's uh, becoming destructive." And 
when we started hearing about that, it was it became different from just being in a band and like making music and jamming and having a good time and drinking beers to wow, we can actually literally like you know maybe make a make a little bit of difference. I mean, I'm not trying to say we're uh, you know we're gonna uh, change the world, but you can try, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, now, off your first album, y'all really didn't have. Uh a definitive sound. Each song's kind of different as far as the sound goes and everything. Notice on the newer album, it's uh, a lot more layered uh, arrangements on there for string orchestras, stuff like that. Um, how did y'all decide to go about that? As far as you know, was it more the producer saying, "Hey, I think we can add a little more to it like that," or is it something that y'all said, "You know, we want to expand our sound a little bit." I've given it more layers as such. I think it was the freedom. I think, you know, we went into the second, went in to do our second album, we went, let's do what we want to do. Ronnie's always wanted to have major strings, and we had Danny, Danny Elfman's string arranger yep. on that album. And that was something did, he always uh, wanted to do. You know, Nightmare for Christmas. Um, Oh, I can't even start to say The Simpsons. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. uh, the list goes on. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm going. <laughs> Ongo Boingo. I mean, the guy is incredible, and, and we literally had one of his string arrangers. And I agree with you totally. I mean, the first album, it was kind of a rush job. I mean, Dave's awesome. Yeah. We made a great album with Dave, and, and it did really well, and it's still doing well. And Dave's awesome. But with Dave, it was. It's not even Dave's fault. It was. It was more so. Uh, if I had to put a blame, I would put on the label. They they threw us in the studio. We only had a month and a half. Most most bands have at least three months. Sometimes six months. Sometimes years to make an album. We had a month and a half, and they were like, "Go. This is the money we have. This is the time we have. Do the best you can." We wound up making a great album with a great producer, and it came out good. But we had no time. It was literally every single day give every single possible bit of energy you have, sleep for six hours, and then you're back in the studio at 10 o'clock in the morning trying to uh, build upon what you did the day before. <laughs> With Howard, it was a, just a totally different scenario, so I couldn't say that maybe Dave couldn't have done a different album if we gave him more time and more money but at the same point in time with with Howard it was second album we had already done well in the eyes of the media and, and in the eyes of the label and, and radio and everybody else so we just had a lot more freedom and we were allowed to do the things that we weren't allowed to do the first time it's, it's not that we wouldn't have done that the first time we just didn't have the time or the money so there, there's the, the real answer you know. alright uh, as far as uh, like this music industry goes do y'all feel that being as famous as y'all are now and picking up steam and continuing to grow and all that, is there any bands that y'all have uh, that y'all got to play with or that you're looking forward to playing with that you haven't yet? You know, or is there even someone here at this festival that y'all have not got to play with and are looking forward to at least bumping into? It? I want to go ahead. <clears throat> I definitely want to play with Flyleaf. I know they've been around for we a while. We have played with them once. We have played with them once. Played with them once. I mean, like, Crawfish tour with them. Yeah, I want to yeah. tour It was with us, Flyleaf, and Snoop Dogg, and that was an amazing yeah. show. Yeah. But, like, their jams are pretty awesome, and they've been around for a while, but yeah. honestly, I just started listening to them. Oh, yeah, everybody uh, open for those. I yeah, love Flyleaf. He's a real good friend. Resident Hero? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah I, grew, I grew up with Ryan. They're like, on Righteous. Six tour with them. Uh, Righteous. Ryan. Yeah, man. Maybe Corn. Uh, great band. Corn. Jeez. Yeah. That we would be crazy. Couple times. Uh, you know, there's <laughs> plenty of bands. I mean, we're definitely a rock band who listens to rock and roll. So we're like constantly jamming new music and, and even old music. I mean, I'm still rocking Boston Greatest Hits. So, yeah. I mean, I think anybody who can sing like that guy could is amazing. So. All right. Uh, Y'all have caught you doing one cover. And, uh, <laughs> what was it? It was doing the Stain. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. So uh, now that brings I've done that one a few times. Side. Yeah, but the, as far as the acoustic side, y'all did the EP or the three acoustic yep. songs. Your acoustic stuff is really good. Thanks. Have y'all ever considered doing anything kind of like Foo Fighters did and stuff like that? And uh, and uh, see, they actually did one too. Yep. Doing Dump. like a uh, an acoustic, you know, kind of like a Tesla five man acoustic jam type deal. Uh, that's an awesome question. Um, now that we are able to do whatever we want to do, uh, we're planning on doing a lot of stuff. We've never released a live album for. A lot of bands release them all the time. We've had two uh, major albums and one album before that, so we've actually had three releases in the past five years, and we've never released a live album. So that's almost unheard of. So we're definitely going to do that. We did release an acoustic EP, and it went extremely well. Um, what I was talking about doing was a new EP that combined songs from the first two releases. So it would be maybe five or six songs from Don't You Fake It and five or six songs from Lonely Road, which I thought would be kind of cool. So you're almost getting two albums worth of singles in one album. 
and then also maybe even adding some new stuff that hasn't been heard yet. But to answer that question, the most recent release that we did release, uh, which is called Valentine's Day, which we released on Valentine's Day this year, February 14th, 2010, is all acoustic. So we definitely still, we dig the people who dig that stuff. That's why our most recent single is all acoustic and we're not really ever going to fully stray away from that. But the predominant, uh, uh, the predominant amount of our fans do dig the heavier, kind of gnarlier, screamier stuff. So, you know, we're gonna have plenty of that. But for the people who dig the acoustic stuff, it's out there. You yeah. know, just just keep your nose out there. That's how you, you know, or that's one way I gauge like a, a, a good band is you put all the distortion behind it you want and still make it sound good. But yeah, it's distortion. It's easy to hide and behind. When, yeah, and when you clean it up with acoustic, there's really no. <coughs> yeah, no, I agree. And. Uh, I mean, you know, one of our biggest songs ever, if you actually go to our MySpace, Face Down has, Face Down Acoustic. I want to say, Face Down has about 26 million plays, but Guardian Angel, which is our ballad, which starts off with acoustic guitar all the way to the end of the song, has 29 million plays. So that's a strong 3 million more plays, and that's the song that some people have never even heard of before, but that's actually, believe it or not, our most popular song, which is basically acoustic. And y'all have actually got a lot of play off of uh, video games. Uh, that's right. Madden. Mix, ATP Fury, um, stuff like that. So I mean, that's we've been in quite a few. Well, you know what? We're gamers. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, uh, there's a, a, a article we did with AP where I gave out my Xbox Live name right there. Just put it out there. We, uh, me and Duke have posted sometimes on MySpace and on Facebook and on our social network, the Red Jumpsuit Alliance, um, where we actually go online and play with people and. and we don't wait for Xbox or for Nintendo to set up a day for us. We do it on our own, and we do our own little posts like, hey, we're going to be hanging out from 5 to 10 o'clock tonight playing Halo 3 if you want to get yeah. your ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> step it up, you know what I mean? But uh, we're into it, man, whatever. We're, we live in the video game age, and most people that we know our age play games. Maybe not every day, but hey, if you can't get down on some Madden every now and then or some Halo, then yeah, I don't know, maybe wrong. you should give it a try, you know <laughs> what I mean? Give it a try. It's pretty fun. Alright, uh, is there anyone in the future, you know, like I said, y'all definitely getting more popular and building steam. Is there anyone in the future that y'all would like to probably see maybe doing a tour with or something like that? So many bands. Um, I've always wanted to tour with Linkin Park personally. Linkin Park, um, for sure. I think they're a great example of a band that's, you know, people talk about like, what's the modern, like, What's the band of nowadays that's never going to be forgotten? Well, I don't think they're going to ever be forgotten. You know what I mean? These guys are nerds. You know, I mean, they're all computer geeks. Hey, whatever, man. <laughs> you know, they can they that's... can write great music. Um, yep. That's the first off the top of my head. Jimmy at World. Uh, we've we've actually done a couple of random shows. But we've never toured with them. Um, every album that they've ever made, you can pretty much hear in our van at some certain point in time, whether it's on random iPod mix or whatever. We're big fans of those guys. Um, those are probably the top two. Other than that, all the greats, you know, I mean, ACDC, we love to tour those guys just because they're incredible. Um, who else? Pink Floyd, I don't know. I know I'm reaching here. But, you know. <clears throat> Gilmore, if you can hear me for some reason, I love you. You're the man. I, I, would, I would sell my soul to play guitar like you, okay? I can tell you that right I'd now. I'd like to be the opening app for a Van Halen tour, dude. Van Halen, another one. That'd I actually awesome. got to see, I got to see the last tour with, uh, with Wolf David, Gain yeah, Wolfgang and David Lee, and I gotta tell you, man, I was just blown away the really? whole show, every song, hit after hit, hit after hit, hit after hit, and David looked great. He even took his shirt off, and he still ripped. Yeah, like, oh man, it was so good. And Eddie looked good and sounded good, and Wolfgang was good on bass. And and uh, damn, Solomon Jersey, it was incredible. One of my one of my favorite shows since I've been alive, definitely. Van Halen. What's uh, probably one of your uh, as far as Y'all been on the road for the past several years. I know y'all did the Warp Tour for several years. Yeah. Uh, was probably one of your best stories as far as uh, something that just kind of stood out. I mean, doesn't matter what it is, but just something random that kind of, you know, something funny that that. One know, struck example. <clears throat> what do you got? Out of all the many. Oh, got? I got some, but oh, also Allison Chains, by the way. I'm sorry, but yeah, to go back yeah, one more time, sure. Allison yeah. Chains. Yes. Uh, we could Please. ever even get one more show. We got to play with them a few times in Australia, and our minds were blown every single night, every day. So. Feel free to blow my mind again if you ever need an opening act. Anyway, <laughs> back to you. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think of a moment that sticks out that's not embarrassing or... No, those are the best. The raunchy. <laughs> They're all embarrassing, Matt. No, I, I, got embarrassing. A, I got an embarrassing one about throwing up on a bus. That's pretty funny. One time I uh, drank a little bit too much and I threw up on the bus and I fell asleep. But what I didn't realize was 
is that I, somehow I threw up on Ronnie's hat and he woke me up. He's like, hey man, no big deal. He threw up on my hat. I need you to get me a new hat. Well, I went in the my back Vulcan lounge. Hat. Yeah, his favorite Vulcan hat. I remember that now. Yeah. And then I went in the back lounge and I was like, dude, I don't think it was me. And as soon as I said that, I was like, dude, I don't think it was me that threw up. I looked down and my shoes were covered in vomit. <laughs> oh, man. It's pretty funny. Dude, okay, There's been a lot of vomit vomit. stories, actually. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a couple number two stories i got a pretty good <laughs> plastic bag boy we were astronaut we were in europe and i uh woke up you know in a crazy state probably 6 30 to 7 a.m <laughs> and i ran up to our bus driver tony and i was like yo dude we gotta pull over is there any way i gotta go to the bathroom well we were traveling it was either from south to north or north to south but in ireland where uh all of the restrooms and gas stations and everything have basically been blown up by the north and the south war they've been having forever so it's about three hours stretch and i was like dying it was one of those i think i'm gonna die was, i was hurting so bad so i bagged one giant one and there was still no pulling over so i you know triple bagged it threw it in the bathroom and went back to sleep oh, <laughs> trucker bomb Yes, sir. Bob. Uh, yeah, I, but the problem with this story is everybody else on the bus had to smell it. Yeah. For the next two hours. But I got up, man. When we stopped, I got up a few hours later and I found it. In my trash can. Did you hide it? I just kept thinking that I kept thinking the guy above me in my bunk kept farting over and, over and that it was coming through my vents and I was like, son of a, did you eat chili last night or what? But no, it was Matt. Yeah, Chuck or Bob. I'm not gonna name names, but I was like. What the hell do I do with this? So it was like, I mean, you know, throw Next it out the window. I don't out. know. And yeah. somebody was Absolutely. like, Did you just put it in the bathroom. I'm not going to name any names. It definitely wasn't me. Donk. <laughs> it definitely wasn't me. I did that. We stayed up so late together. <laughs> so many times. <laughs> you don't remember? No. Yeah. <laughs> me and Joey and Duke. <laughs> you just don't want to remember. Anyways. Dirty story. You're a left-handed drummer, right? Yes. Yeah. Rare. Oh, Interesting, right? Yeah. Sound yeah. Not many. Not many do that. No. Yeah, it sucks though because I play drums and so does Matt as well. Yeah, so. I was about to say your drum tech. How does he handle that? Oh, it sucks. That's Every single time I want to like jump on the kit and be like, well, what do you think about yeah. this? I gotta play like this. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta and I'm like, my left foot doesn't work. Um, this sucks. So I have to sing him the beat and then yeah. he'll figure it out. <laughs> the drum tech doesn't get to jam out during. Well, actually, right now John is his own drum tech because uh, I don't know. I just I like the John the way John tunes drums. I'm not gonna I, lie. I hate to stroke you off, but yeah, well, I got tired of uh, you know just being the rocker and I like to get my hands dirty nowadays. I think it's good when a drummer sets fun, up his own man. kit. You know what I mean? It's yeah, that's that's it's your fun. domain. That's your kingdom. Yeah, that's I mean, kingdom. That's, yeah. The drums are probably more personal than anything. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're a Gibson. You're diehard Gibson. All right. I've been playing uh, PRS lately, but really? I have a Gibson with me. You definitely me owned most Gibsons. Yeah, I was about to say, because I've seen Yeah, it's just a, kind of a recent thing, but yeah, yeah, Gibsons, I love them. So what do you like about that? You know, the Paul Reese Smiths, are you, now let me ask you this, are you playing the newer Paul Reese Smiths, or are you trying to go back for the older ones that were all handmade? I believe it's the 91. Okay, anything pre-95 would be, was before they went full on production, so yeah, yeah those are the... Definitely the one. I felt bad. I didn't realize how bad I smashed it the last show until I just took it out. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of cracks in it. I remember. So, yeah, I noticed uh, yeah. Whoops. most of the ones I've YouTube seen. YouTube remembers. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Gibsons, like the SGs. And yeah, I have an SG with me today. Awesome. Gibsons are cool, man, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't like the fretboard. Uh, call me picky. <laughs> I like a Fender fretboard better. Yeah, well, smoother. Old ones, we like the old ones. Yeah. Vintage '80s and. Uh, oh, I've never actually played an older one, so. I like an electric. Maybe I can. If, maybe I can be in line. If y'all were gonna be around a little bit longer, jug. we actually have a vintage guitar store downtown. Really? And that's all they do. And these guys are. Free but, did, but do they let you play them though? Because a lot of they have one for free. A lot of vintage guitar players are you touch you buy kind of stuff. No, scenario. this this guy's super cool. It's actually two brothers, Matt and Mike, Main Street Vintage Guitar. They do guitars for everyone. That's cool. Uh, Jack White. Anytime we have bands playing over in Oxford, like Modest Mouse, uh, they come over to the store because it's not your average going there and browse. You know, these guys have got forty, fifty thousand dollars guitars That's hanging sweet. there, and they'll custom build you whatever you want to. And uh, but yeah, man, a lot of guys. I'm I'd love to tell everyone about that. They've got they've got some cool stuff, and they've got thousands of guitars stashed away. So, but yeah, that's they're they're 
pretty popular, you know, in the music industry as far as I don't think I've ever been they there. do like oh, old school. There? I don't think so. Oh, we've been to almost every guitar shop in the country, but maybe not Dude, there. Dude, you gotta check them out. They're downtown on Main Street, it's right there. Really the yeah, they okay. they built a store. It was an old building, and they completely renovated it themselves. No contractors. They built yeah, everything. I don't think I've been there yet. It's awesome. Sounds awesome. I mean, unfortunately, we'll probably spend way too much money if we go there. But <laughs> Cheap Trick, actually, um, Gibson does not have an Explorer base, and they wouldn't make him one. So uh, Mike made him one and did and built him up, and it's wicked. So, yeah. That's another reason why I don't like Gibson. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, yeah. But, you know, the old school stuff's nice. So... Guys, man, I really appreciate y'all hanging out with For us. For sure. And, uh, hey, no problem. And man. talking to us and everything. So, big fans. I think I uh, had your first time probably about four years ago. So, Sweet. I run to Atlanta. I'm, my buddy's a DJ in Atlanta, so I'm over there all the time. So. Yeah, playing there tomorrow night. That's yep. great. That's great. Hey, man, they're good to us, man. We can't wait to get there. Uh, but we got to get tonight done first. So Tabernacle. We're looking for I think that. they closed Roxy down, but that was. Yeah. Some good shows there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, there's a car I lot. Saw seven dust. Well, no, sorry. It's yeah. a liquor store. Right down the street from there, like under the overpass down from the masquerade, and me and Duke were walking back from like that little strip mall area way yeah. over there. Walking by and we saw there was a Bentley and like Mercedes and these really I think I was stupid there. nice cars. And we were looking at them like walking by like, oh wow, check that out. And we looked, and there was a guy in the parking lot, and he had a strap on in this like fully automatic little like Uzi looking machine gun, just like walking around the parking lot. And we were like, "Oh, <laughs> shiz!" Somebody was <laughs> balling. ATL. Somebody was balling in the hot Atlanta. In yeah. the liquor store it's parking lot. It's probably an Uzi. No, I wouldn't doubt it. It was it was pretty awesome. All right, just, well, thanks for having us, man. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. Uh, so look forward to getting to see y'all on stage and everything. We're going to do our thing, totally. <laughs>